So far on this course, we've seen lots of different kinds of data, numbers, images, strings, and then structures that we created ourselves. But every kind of data we've seen so far has a fixed size. It might have a couple fields of a structure, might be a simple piece of atomic data like a number, it might be a string that can have some characters in it. But today we're going to see new kinds of data where we can have as many pieces of data as we want all together in one data structure. This is one of the biggest and most important concepts in this course, and today we're going to work through why we need it and how we can have it and how following the design recipe and the template can help us understand and work with it. Let's start by remembering our point data structure. Points have an x and a y coordinate, which are both numbers. And we've seen many times the template for processing a point. Also, we saw the data definition, couple of points. Couple of points is great if what you want to do is store some points, but you don't know exactly how many. A couple of points can store one point, can store two points, or can store no points at all. We saw that this was a union, and we saw how to write functions that process unions like a couple of points. Here's the template for functions that process a couple of points. There's a few things that are really important to note here. One is we have a conditional, and we check for each of the kinds of couple of points that we might have, none, one, or two. And second, that we have a reference to the process point template each time we come to a place where we reference the point data definition inside a couple of points. There's three references to the point data definition inside a couple of points, and there's three references to process point in the template for processing a couple of points. But what if we wanted to have more than two points? What should we do then? One possibility is we could just add another clause to our data definition and to our template. Here's even more points. It has four possibilities now, zero, one, two, or three points, and we have an even bigger template that we can handle with more and more cases. Again, the template follows exactly the structure of the data definition. But this is somewhat unsatisfying for two reasons. First, we're repeating ourselves a lot. One, two, and three, we're just doing the same thing over and over again. And second, and even more problematically, we can't actually solve our problem. What happens if we need four points? To solve these problems, we're gonna tackle them both at once. We're gonna start by trying to reuse a couple of points inside even more points. Here's a new version of even more points. It only has two cases, so we're already a lot simpler. And it reuses a couple of points. That is, when we have a couple of points, we can add one more to create maybe three points. Actually, this works well if we need one point, two points, or three points. Let's see some examples of this even more points data definition. Here are four examples of even more points. If we want no points at all, we just use make none. If we want one point, we use make none to be our couple of points, and we use make sum to add one more point, the point at one, one. If we want to have two points, we can use make one to construct a couple of points that has the point five, five in it, and we can use make sum to add the point one, one onto it as well. So that example has two points. What if we want to have three points? Well, couple of points uses make two to construct a structure with two points in it, and then we can use make sum to add another point, and now we have three points. But what if we wanted four points? We've solved our repetition problem, but we haven't solved our problem that we can only have a limited number of points. Here's an idea for four points. This data structure has four points in it at 0, 0, 1, 1, 5, 5, and 7, 8. What did I do? All I did was I used make sum another time. I said that make sum adds the point 0, 0 onto something that we already created with make sum. But what data definition does this fit? Make sum isn't part of couple of points, so we need something that includes make sum inside the data definition. We're going to have to have a reference to that data definition inside even more points. Now, what data definition is it that includes make sum? It's even more points itself. So we're going to have to have a data definition, even more points, that references back to even more points itself. 
Let's try writing that out. Here's our new version of even more points. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for this example because make2 isn't part of even more points. We've lost our example of how to represent 2. But is that really a problem? Let's add another case to our data definition that includes the possibility of a sum with an even more points inside of it. Now our four-point data structure works. We can even make a five-point data structure. Now we can represent as many points as we want. But we can make our data definition simpler. The second case in our data definition, where we have a couple of points, isn't really doing anything for us. We can represent everything by using the first clause, make none, and the third clause, make some point even more points. So let's write a new data definition that's simpler and allows us to represent as many points as we want. Here's the data definition for a bunch of points. This allows us to represent as many points as we need and doesn't have anything extra that we don't need. Now let's write some examples of bunch of points. Here's 0, 1, and 2 points, all constructed using the constructors for bunch of points. If we don't want any points, we use make none. If we want one point, we use make some one time, with make none as the last bunch of points. If we want two points, we use make some two times, again with make none as the last bunch of points. This also works for three points and for four points. In fact, it works for as many points as you can imagine. Let's go back to our data definition and look at it one more time. The key idea is that we have a data definition with a reference to itself inside of it. That is, bunch of points is defined using bunch of points. Other than that difference, which is just something that we realized we could allow ourselves to do, bunch of points is just like the union data definitions that we saw last time. Allowing ourselves to have data definitions that reference themselves is one of the key ways that we're going to develop interesting data definitions that can handle all the kinds of situations that are important in writing real computer programs. In the rest of this lecture, we're going to see how to design functions and process data that uses a bunch of points.